presidents, dear colleagues, rarely have I felt more of an, in the, a minority than today. I must admit, I don't understand you. I don't understand this uh, complacency, this self-satisfaction. I'm, perhaps I'm living on a different planet. When I hear uh, Prime Minister Kenny saying, well, the citizens are going to thank us, but the citizens don't understand us anymore. They don't understand Europe. They don't understand what we do. And you say that we have a budget which is a consonant with the size of the crisis. No, we don't have an appropriate budget allowing us to deal with the crisis. We don't have a budget, which is a budget for uh, developing the south of Europe. No, no, no. What we have is an agreement which is really bottom level and we've got nine billion for young people whereas during the election campaign the very same day that the president of the parliament a social democrat mr martin schultz was entering into agreement for nine billion for a youth guarantee the social democrat candidate steinbrook in the german parliament was saying that what we needed was 20 billion at the very least in order to fight against youth unemployment so i'd like to know when it comes to european sum whether 9 billion and 20 billion are the same figure. I learned in the school that it's not the same figure. So, I mean, we, we, we're taking the mickey here. You've reached a deal, and this parliament, we here, have missed a, a fantastic opportunity. We've missed a historic opportunity. We really could have ensured that European democracy was up and running again. We've missed that opportunity. We've missed the opportunity to show the European Council that it's not like that that we're going to build a Europe of tomorrow. It's not like that in carrying on with encouraging national egotism, uh, the prime example being Mr Cameron, national egotism uh, followed by other governments, uh, uh, by more and more governments as in copied by other governments in the European Parliament we haven't been able to withstand that we haven't been able to do anything about this rise of national egotism and when we're asking for a decent European budget with own resources we're told no and Mr Verhofstadt says ah oh, yes you'll see you'll see what happens after the review and then we'll we'll have the own resources that we need no no uh, you won't get anything you won't get anything because because the council, the heads of state and government unanimously uh, want to keep a, a power, want to hold the reins of power in Europe. They don't want to, uh, democracy. They don't want co-decision with the parliament. They want to keep all the powers. And they, they're above, what they're doing is above democracy. It's at a different level. Uh, so you, that you won't get a proper review. That's why we should have said no, because the only language that, uh, that, that politicians understand is, is power, it's a trial of strength and showing power in a trial of strength. The only language that politicians understand is when you can say no. When Mr Cameron says uh, I'm going to impose my veto, everyone buckles under, everyone kneels down. If we put down our veto as a parliament, if we said no to this budget, I mean this isn't a futuristic budget, we've already ha always had structural funds, but now we don't have a, a, a structural funds to support the South, we don't have a real plan to help youth unemployment, so I'm I'm very blue. I'm very down. I don't understand you. And Mr. Habermas is uh, right. When I look at you here, I just see technocrats, uh, cold technocrats that are in power. There's no emotion. There's no feeling for citizens in this Europe of crisis. So thanks for being kind enough to listen to me.